Hey everyone, Sunny here, and it's been a while. Of course, if you're a long time follower of this channel or my works, you might know that it's nothing new that I'm not the most active on social platforms, and I do take time every now and then to just step away, focus on work or mental health. However, this time things are different. I'm recording this video to address some things and to provide some answers, mainly to avoid misinformation, but also to get some sort of closure too. What you do with this information is up to you. I'm not here to make accusations or drama, even if certain people like to frame it as such. It's a lot, but I will try to keep things short. Are you still with Saturday AM? Nope. Those who might be new to the channel or my works, I'm a full-time graphic novel artist, and for the past nine years, I have been one of the co-owners of My Footprint Entertainment LLC, the publishing company behind the diversity-focused manga magazine and brand Saturday AM, where I also had two of my stories, Saigami and Killshot, serialized. As of March 2023, I officially stepped down from my position in the company, and apart from some commitments involving the Saigami book publication, I no longer work with Saturday AM. What will happen to Saigami now? The honest answer is, I don't know. Upon my resignation, I did state that I'm open to discussing and working on future Saigami content, especially since a good chunk of the third volume is already done. So the optimistic answer would be, if the sales of the second volume are good, surely there can be a way to continue. So this is the part where I should beg and pressure everyone to go and buy a volume or two. I mean, it should be a given if you want more content for a series, you just gotta support it. But the more realistic answer is that the fate of Saigami for the next five year is pretty much out of my hands and so far nothing has been negotiated. Is it true that artists aren't paid at Saturday AM? I won't speak on behalf of the other creators and staff members, there are plenty of testimonials out there if you want to look more into things, but my experience was this. For certain things I got paid and for others I was not. The majority of my years spent at the company and all the work going into the magazines were unpaid, but I did get paid for the published books and did receive some compensation for certain deals, either monetary or in the form of travel, convention attendance or products. While none of the compensation received would add up to even close to a livable wage regarding the workload, I am still grateful for the opportunities I was given. The entertainment industry most of the time lowballs artists and it's very much true for comic creators too. Everyone who wants to be serious about this career should be aware of this and make decisions accordingly. I'm not here to tell you to put your bar up high or to jump at any opportunity. Different people will have different experiences, chances and career paths and that's part of the challenge of this industry. Just be aware that it can be very predatory and exploitative as well and everyone should learn to draw boundaries and try to aim for a healthy and sustainable career instead of having to break yourself in the process. Why did you leave? The company, the mission, the creators and the staff were all significant part of my life for the last decade and there's no doubt that being part of this all played a huge role of who I am today as a creator and as a person. And I'm grateful for all the opportunities, life lessons, memories, and connections I made. However, as time went on, there were more and more red flags popping up, and I was not the only one noticing these. My decision to leave Saturday AM almost after a decade was not made easily, and it was something that was years in the making. I know parts of my resignation letter were leaked online, so some of you might have already seen things, even though it was never meant to be public, especially since it mentioned some heavy personal things that I was not ready to share with just anybody yet out there, but the messed up things about the internet is that once something's out there, it's out for good, so it is what it is. In the end, my decision came down to a multitude of things, and contrary to some counterclaims, it was not rooted in greed, politics, being controlled by others, or my having beef with certain members. Do you recommend working with them? 
I will never deny or belittle the achievements the company, the creators, and the staff had made over the years. And for so many years, I was so proud to be able to state that I'm part of this. It was a mission I truly believed in. I would never doubt that many creators, especially foreigners like myself, would not have had some opportunities where they are, and without question, Saturday AM could be a solution and a career path for some. I met and got to work with fantastic people during my years with the company, and being able to go to conventions and have my books in stores nationwide can be harder on your own, way harder. I will always be grateful for all this, and I'm sure many would love to have these opportunities. However, for me and many others I have talked to, the red flags and the negative experiences outweigh the good ones. Many people who left are thriving on their own, or with other partners or companies, myself included. Just like with any career or workplace, some people will find their place for good while it's never meant to last for others. Whether it's the right choice for you or anyone else is not for me to decide or judge. The only thing I can say in this matter is that for me, leaving was the best decision. My journey with Saturday AM started out as an exciting adventure that I truly loved. I really did. Even one of my exes told me that I loved Saturday AM more than him, and honestly, it was kinda true. Mind you, I was a closeted lesbian, but that's not the point here. Me working with Saturday AM, ironically, is similar to a relationship gone wrong. It's all wonderful in the beginning. There's a spark, big feelings, an ambitious future together, us against the world, nothing can ruin it. But then you start to feel that something is off. First, you don't even know what it is, you just shrug it off because clearly you were meant to be. Stay focused and don't ruin this for everybody else involved. Then more and more red flags starts to pop up and after a while, no amount of love bombing can undo the damage done. But you still stick around. Why? Not for yourself, for others. Out of fear, wanting to believe. Not wanting to be the person dragging others down. Not daring to draw those boundaries. Not wanting to throw all that work away, then it all would have been in vain. The fear of being shamed and ridiculed like others will have before, it all came down to fear. And that's how you know it was never a healthy relationship. Some thrive in environments like that. For a long time, I honestly thought I did too, but Only after I left did I realize that it was never right for me. And no, that doesn't mean that I don't believe or support diversity, or I'm suddenly a hater. It's okay to outgrow people and places. You don't have to stick around or to anything or anyone that's bringing toxicity into your life. That doesn't mean that it can't be a place for you or for others. I'm grateful for the positives and all the things I learned, and I know many who left feel the same way too. I'm not here to deter you or anyone who aspires to join this company. Despite what many of my ex-coworkers claim, me and the other creators who spoke up on their negative experiences are not here for clout or to spread lies. But when you dare to defy and step out of a company that became eerily similar to a cult led by a narcissistic leader, I guess public shaming, shunning, and being called a faithless liar is to be expected. Many people who spoke up after me, I never interacted with while at the company or after, but still our experiences align and share common negative points, yet every unique history of working or interacting with the company and leadership that was not a praise, has been claimed as libel, lies, trolling, and met with nothing but snarky, unprofessional responses, with no actual acknowledgement or addressing of possible issues and grievances within the company. When I spoke up about an issue that made me feel concerned and uncomfortable, instead of being heard, my behavior got called microaggression and ahistorical and got demanded an apology that I refused to give. Valid criticism, wanting accountability and better treatment for people 
should be met with self-reflecting and give grounds for growth and improvement and not something that's triggering a fight or flight response and is waved off as an organized smear campaign. It pains me that the company I adamantly believed and stood for now calls me a liar just because I'm not willing to be a flying monkey anymore. There is so much more I could say on this and so many more things I can't talk about and in the end this is not why I'm here. Saturday AM was an era in my life that is now over. I'm grateful it happened and I'm relieved it's over. I wish I could have educated myself earlier. I wish I could have seen the signs sooner. I wish I laughed when I first started to have doubts. I wish it didn't end the way it did. The damage has been done and I'm still working on recovery, both mentally and physically, unlearning all the conditioning and rekindling my passion for comics. I be leaving some resources for anyone who wishes to look into things further so you can make educated and informed decisions for yourself. I wish the current and future Saturday M creators good luck. I will keep supporting them by getting the books just as I always did. And I hope others will have a better experience than me and many others had. So what now? I would lie if I said making my decision and leaving the company that was part of my identity for many years was something euphoric. I had to step away from social media and pretty much all connections, be it parasocial or personal ones, to give myself room to reflect, reevaluate, and start working on healing. I'm sorry for up and disappearing and leaving many without contacts for months and months, well over a year. I had to shout out everything and everyone to be able to focus on recovery, both physically and mentally. Now I feel okay enough to be back. It won't be a sudden jump back into action with a flashy return, but I'm doing my best. There's still a lot of fear and hurt to be worked on. But all the baby steps I've been making have given me the confidence and courage to be back and start anew. For the first time in over a decade, I am my own person again, with so many paths and opportunities to choose from, that once again, I'm excited for the future. While I'm still in a rather deep burnout when it comes to drawing, I'm still working on comics, and being able to work under better circumstances definitely helped me rediscover my passion for this art form. My current main project is the manga adaptation of the False Hero Light novel series. You can read now the first chapters on Manga Plus, and there are several personal projects that I'll be coming back to in time, such as Killshot and Ships in Battles. Apart from drawing, I have been dabbing into all sorts of crafts aka my experimental therapeutic activities phase. For the last several months, I've been working on all sorts of merch and products and have been running a successful Etsy shop called Sweet Haven Cottage with my wife. Making things other than just drawing has always been something I loved and enjoyed and now I feel like I'm really at my happy place while creating things others can enjoy too. I've been learning a bunch of new skills from working with UV resin to embroidery digitizing and creating custom apparel and accessories is where I found myself be just as passionate and engaged as with manga drawing. Going forward, I'd like to shape this channel to fit this new career path and rebrand, so to speak. The Saigami project name is something that doesn't feel right anymore. I'm so much more than just that series, and I feel like sticking to that name would hold me back. I still will make content for manga and drawing, especially live streams again, but I also want to share my whole creative journey, and fingers crossed, to help and inspire others like I always aspire to. Thank you very much for watching this video, if you're still here. Stay safe, and keep on making art that makes you happy. Sunny out.